Now remember, power is measured in watts and it's the rate at which energy is consumed. So our input power will be the rate at which energy is delivered in joules per second or watts. Our output power is the rate at which energy is used by the city. But we also have our lines and that represents a power loss. If the lines had zero resistance, all the power on the input side would reach the output side. But the lines do heat up and there's some losses due to heat. So we're going to label that P loss, the power lost by the lines. Now, power we know we can solve with three different equations. Let's put the three equations down now and discuss. Now, our most basic power equation is power is voltage times current, but we can get two more power equations if we simply substitute into this formula Ohm's law, which is V is equal to IR. So I substitute for V and replace it with IR, and I get the following. So my second equation for power, when I substitute in IR for V, is IR times I, or I squared R. So there's another way we can solve for power. And a third and final way we can solve for power is to sub in for I in our original equation. And using Ohm's law, I is V over R. So let's see what we get. So subbing in for I is V over R. I get V times V over R, or V squared over R is my final power equation. Now, we just have to decide which one is appropriate for this given question. Now, typically, we know what the power input is. They might give you that it's 100,000 watts, say. And they might give you the input voltage. So if you know the input power and input voltage, typically P is VI is a good choice for power input. I'm going to put that right onto our diagram. So although all three power equations will work if you have the right information, typically the input power we can use V times I since we usually have the input voltage as well. And what this will allow us to do is figure out what the current is flowing through the circuit. And remember, it's a series circuit, or at least it's simplified or imagined to be a series circuit where the current is constant throughout. Now, let's try and figure out how much power is lost by the lines themselves. Now, we have a choice. I can figure out the power loss using VI. I can figure out the power loss using I squared R. And I can figure out the power loss using V squared over R. Now, this is the critical concept you have to understand the voltage is actually not known across this resistor. Remember Kirchhoff's voltage law. So in a series circuit, this voltage across little r and this voltage across the load or the big R have to add to my overall voltages. And since we don't know the overall voltage across the city, we also don't know the overall voltage across the little r, the line resistance. So the voltage across these resistors is unknown so we have to use an equation that doesn't have voltage in it. So the only one left is this I squared R. Now we know the current. We can figure out the current using our input data. The line resistance is given. It'll be little r. So this is a great formula to use for power loss. And this is probably the only one you'll ever use to find the power lost in a line. So let's write that now on our diagram. So here we see power loss we can calculate using I squared times R. Now the only thing left is our output power. Our output power, we can use the equations, but if we use a little bit of common sense, if we start with a certain input power and we lose a little bit of power through the lines, whatever's left over will be the output power. So P out will be P in minus P loss. So we finished off the labeling on our schematic and I've summarized our equations below. Input power is V in times I, loss is I squared R, and the output power will be our input power minus our loss. Now the only thing left is efficiency, and when we talk about efficiency, we're comparing the output to the input. So efficiency will be our output power divided by our input power. So there's our equations at the bottom for transmission lines. Now a couple more quick comments before I let you loose and try some sample problems. One is the values of the current and the values of the input voltage. Remember, current creates heat. The more current that is pouring through that line, the more heat is generated, and heat is unwanted. That represents our power loss. So if we've got an input power, let's say we want to deliver 100,000 watts to a city. We could deliver it at a high current and a low voltage, or a high voltage and a low current.
and you're always better off delivering it at a high voltage and a low current because if you just keep the voltage up, the pressure in the lines, remember voltage is electric pressure, and keep the current creeping along slowly, you're going to minimize the losses since the, the losses depend directly on the square of the current. So if we want to minimize the losses, we want to deliver the power at a low current and a high voltage.